the game over the last two. Being in Sunbelt play, that is so important to have your guard play aggressive. And for Finch, he's found his spots on the floor. Also shooting well from beyond the arc. Has 16 against Coastal Carolina. Expect him to try to be aggressive along with Kenzie here today. Marshall wins the opening tip, and we are underway inside Hanner as we already have a whistle before the clock even started. Our officials for tonight's game, Chuck Jones, Bart Lennox, and Leslie Jones. This is the Marshall team that's second in the Sun Belt Conference, averaging 82 points per game, but also leads the Sun Belt in rebounds, assists, blocks, and assists to turnover ratio, along with offensive rebounds as well. Marshall actually number one in the country in offensive rebounds with 15. So you want to talk about work being cut out for you. Andre Saversov and Carlos Curry for Georgia Southern, they have their work cut out for them. First in offensive rebounds, second in total rebounds. So this is really going to be a match between an NBA-style offense and the Thundering Herd against a defensive identity in Georgia Southern. As we are still waiting for a play to resume, and to get a look at Dan D'Antoni in his ninth season as head coach for the herd and got a chance to catch up with him before the game. He's just a laid back guy. Absolutely. You know, when you are an assistant coach in the NBA, you pick up a few tricks and he knows he's going to let his players play. Yep, absolutely. Along with Kenzie, looking at the starting five for the herd, keep an eye out for Andrew Taylor as Micah Hanlogton, the true freshman center, gets the first points of the game. This Marshall team is going to play fast. If you know anything about the Dan Tony tree, that's exactly what their teams do. They play fast and play with a lot of pace. This is an all-senior-led Georgia Southern starting five. Kaden Archie along with Jalen Finch, Ty Strickland, Carlos Curry, and Andre Saversoff. Curry setting up a screen for Finch. Nine to shoot for the Eagles as Finch drives his way in. First shot won't go. Offensive rebound. Curry swiped away, and it's still inbounds recovered by the herd. But I like that Danny Jalen Finch putting his head down early on and trying to be aggressive. Andrew Taylor, another red shirt senior for this herd program. Pull up Jay is short. Ball loose on the floor. Fight for the basketball. It'll be a jump ball. And possession will go to the Eagles. And for head coach Brian Berg in year three. Finally got back up to 500 overall with Georgia Southern. Got to be feeling good after a 2 0 start in Sunbelt play. Absolutely. Again, with a competitive conference, they're playing their best basketball at the best time. As soon as Sunbelt play has started, all they've done is won their last two games. The 2-2-1 two -two trap by the herd. The Saversov gets across half court. Georgia Southern overall 9-6 on the year. It's Ty Strickland finds Finch. 10 to shoot. Andre Saversov double team kicks to Archie. 5 to shoot. Archie finds Finch. Corner three. Got it. And that's what... Coach Berg wanted to see this Eagles team do more and shoot. Finch, again, finding his spots on the floor. First he drove inside, then he sits in the corner for a three-pointer. Just beautiful basketball. 36% three-point shooter as Kinsey misses on the other end. Deep three from Taylor off the mark, rebounded by Curry. You can expect a lot of that. Taylor is trigger happy, always has the green light from beyond the arc. Almost a steal from Taylor, and Finch keeps it in bounds. Quickly gets across half court. Good passing from the Eagles. Strickland inside the logo. Finds Saversov. Wing three. Connects. That's two for two for the Eagles from long distance. How about the three-point shooting, David? You want to try to play with a team like Marshall, you hit your outside shots. Two quick three-pointers in this first half. That's exactly what the Eagles need. Especially if they want to keep up with this high-octane offense of the herd. Here's Tavion Kinsey, our player to watch on the herd side. Pass inside, and how about Obina on a chilly killing? Open lane for the jam. A beautiful slip off the pick and roll by Killen there to just dive to the basket. He saw that two players were hedging, got the easy dunk. The junior from Lagos, Nigeria, with his first basket. Finch with screen, the lob to Archie, and that's one way to respond if you're the Eagles. What a dunk by Archie, but what a lot of people probably didn't see is the backdoor cut that started it all. He flashed on the baseline, was wide open, nobody was covering for him, and there it was. Caden Archie has really had a step-up performance offensively in the last few games for the Eagles. 
on Ochili Kill, and this time a free throw line jumper and gets that one to fall. We got Mar a track race early on, Danny. <laughs> Marshall three of six to start shooting. Georgia Southern three of four. Strickland absorbing contact and gets that one to go. Ty Strickland his first points. Everybody on the floor has scored for the Eagles already except for Carlos Curry. Corner three from Taylor in and out. Gets his own miss. Baseline jumper, no. How does Marshall get out of this scoring drought early? Turnovers. Turnovers right there. Play some defense and don't let Georgia Southern have the advantage on the offensive end. Kenzie going to give it back to Camden Kerfman. Now on a chilly killing over two Eagles. Is short. Rebound Sabersoff. A great job by Carlos Curry to help on the defensive end. Soft Finch was in trouble. Sabersoff underneath. Basket counts and the foul. He'll shoot a complete a three-point play when we come back from our first media timeout. Georgia Southern off to a hot start. 12-6. Four minutes in on ESPN+. Plus. Did you know one of Nissan's EVs survived the North Pole? And one can go 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. And they're all emission free. But don't get an EV for the E. And knowing, and also for Marshall, it's their first game on the road for the Sun Belt. Their head coach, Dan D'Antoni, said that he's just going to let them play and let them be ambitious the whole entire game. Back to you, Danny. Anxious shell as Andre Saversaw completes a three-point play before the media break. David, we saw on the side, Coach D'Antoni was rushing <laughs> to call a timeout. That was one of the times where he probably needed to take over. Absolutely. You know, he talked to us about he lets the players play. He tries not to overcoach, but right now Georgia Southern is red hot from all around the court. And they have to do something to slow him down. Kinsey's pass off the mark looking for on a chilly killing. I mean, you talk about scoring all across for Georgia Southern, David. The Eagles, five of six, they have knocked down both their threes to start. And efficiency is an understatement here, Danny. The way Georgia Southern has come out and started this first half, firing off all cylinders. Tyron Moore in for the first time for the Eagles, along with Johnny McFadden. Moore finds Saversoff in the corner, back out to Finch. McFadden. Nowhere to go. Kicks to Moore. Good passing from the Eagles. Baseline drive. Oh, Caden Archie. He hung in midair to get that one to go. Oh, my goodness. That was like Mike asked. You saw him in the air bouncing around. A little scoop layup. Beautiful. And a steal by the Eagles. Three on two transition. Saversoff all the way. He has eight points in the first half. How about this run by the Eagles? Well, I'll tell you what, Danny. A tornado has come to Statesboro, but it's actually just the Georgia Southern basketball team. What a way to start this half. Nine-nothing run over the last minute and a half. They've made seven in a row. Tavion Kinsey is fouled by Finch and will go to the foul line. If you want to respond, if you're Marshall, that's how you do it right there. Get it to your best player in Kinsey. We really haven't seen much of him right now, Danny, in this first half. So if you're Marshall, you have to find any way possible. May it's, maybe it's in the post. Maybe it's pick and roll. But give the ball to number 24. Well, Damian Kinsey last season had a chance to elect to go to the NBA draft and decided to come back because he talked with an agent as he was getting ready. And the agent said to him flat out, if you're not ready mentally, you don't need to go into the league. So Kinsey decided to come back to Marshall for one more year and try to work on his draft stock. And Coach D'Antoni said that he's really worked on his mental part of the game as he missed the second free throw. I think that's a testament to how D'Antoni coaches as well. Very player friendly as Strickland gets a layup. Make that eight in a row for Georgia Southern. Something has caught fire for the Eagles. Andrew Taylor answering back for three. And that was nasty right there. He's another player that Marshall has to get involved. Between Kinsey and Taylor, they average 39 points a game. Strickland to McFadden. Can the Eagles keep this hot streak going? Tyron Moore inside the perimeter. Ten to shoot. Kamari Brown for three, and that's the first miss after making eight in a row for the Eagles. Second miss overall in the half. A good sign for Marshall there to finally get a stop on the defensive end. No good underneath. Another foul as Han Lockton misses inside. 
But we'll have free throws for Urbina on a chili killing. We talked about it. The offensive rebounding for Marshall leading Division I in offensive rebounds. That's something Georgia Southern has to play 40 complete minutes of is making sure you get those defensive rebounds. Because if you let Marshall settle in and get multiple chances on the offensive end, it's going to be a rough night. Already a rough start for the herd. 33% shooting, one of four from long distance, and one of four from the free throw line. Marshall with a Sunbelt worse, 62% from the charity stripe. See Georgia Southern, 8 of 10 to shoot the start. Moore surveying the field, finds Curry. Eight on the shot clock. Kamari Brown with five to shoot. Inside McFadden, he wasn't ready. Turnover by Taylor. Taylor on the drive, goes to the corner, backing down Brown. Kicks to Cameron Kerfman for three, no. Rebounded by Tyree Moore. Georgia Southern a chance here to make it a double digit lead. More somebody to look out for on the perimeter. And also, as you talked about, David, the Eagles have won their last 28 games, shooting above 50% from the field. Strickland in the corner, baseline jumper too strong. Taylor on the miss. Marshall has been slumping, only making one of their last seven. Davion Kinsey's jumper. In and out. And that's what Marshall needs to do. Get it to your best player in Kenzie. You see the range that he has when he pulled up for that mid-range jumper. So long and athletic, he's able to shoot over anybody. Eight minutes into the first half. Eagles up by nine. Brown was looking for Curry. He cut too soon. Heard in transition. Kenzie. No. Tavian Kenzie. Oh, of three from the field to start. Got the switch. Strickland. Oh, he danced his way through. Couldn't finish the jumper. Brown on the follow, though, and the Eagles are up by 11. Well, Strickland had the big on him in the perimeter, which means there's going to be some open space inside the painted area. So just a good job there by Kamari Brown. 21 to 10. Marshall struggling in the first half. Taylor was looking for hand locked in. Good defense from Strickland. The herd will keep following the media break. Eagles up by 11 with 11.15 to go. They're shooting 69% here to start. More to come after the break on ESPN+. Plus. Hey team, the new school year is about to start, and today we're going to talk about best practices. Did somebody say practice? No, Coach. I that's with the Phoenix Suns. I mean, when you coach those high-level players, MVPs, NBA champions, you know, Coach D'Antoni said you just let them do their thing. Absolutely. He knows a little something, and when he has a player like Tavion Kinsey that he's coaching now with Marshall, I'm sure he has so many nuggets of wisdom for a player like that, seeing Kobe and Steve Nash play. And it also helps that, you know, for Dan Tony, Kinsey came back for one final year so he could work on his draft stock. His play resumes. Tyron Moore to Caden Archie inside the Carlos Curry. Double team. Here's Strickland for three. Yes. Strickland scorched that one. Came off the screen to the wing and just pulled up with confidence. First made three for Strickland. Davion Kinsey, pass is intercepted inside. Eagles in transition. Moore with the right hand. Almost punched back in by Curry. Great defense by Georgia Southern on that last possession, though. Able to read that Kinsey was looking for the dump off. Kinsey couldn't finish the jam on the, the lob. And Tavion Kinsey having a cold start 0 for 4 in the first half. Eagles making him very uncomfortable. They're not letting him get to the spots on the floor he usually does. Strickland tripped up. 
It's going to be a foul on Kinsey, his first. How can he get back in rhythm here, David? I like what they did in that last possession. Bring him in the high post and come off a short screen for a pick and roll. Tried to find the pass, but just wasn't there. But again, if you put him on, di on different spots of the floor, that forces Georgia Southern maybe into some mismatches. Well, the defense for the Eagles has indeed been working 10 minutes in. I mean, Marshall all kind of discombobulated. 25% shooting, one of five from beyond the three-point line. Also is making one of four from the charity stripe. And have now gone over four minutes without a point. Finch to Archie. Archie backing down Goran Miladinovic. Archie deep two. Nothing but net. Banked it in. And Georgia Southern is getting the matchups they like right now. That was Archie with a big guarding in Miladinovic. Miladinovic, excuse me. Miladinovic with the hook shot right there. <laughs> that is a tongue twister right there. But Georgia Southern is getting the mismatches they like. You're seeing a lot of bigs on the perimeter. And for Georgia Southern with players like Finch and Archie that are very quick, they use that to their advantage. Eagles controlling the pace. Curry elbow jumper short. Miladinovic with good defense there, Danny. Corner three off the mark by David Early. And Kinsey finally breaks the scoring jug, gets his first bucket. Well, he had Savrasov on him there, so just an easy drive to the glass off the right-hand side. Finch, the left elbow. Savrasov trying to work his way through. Curry fouled. He's trying to get one over Miladinovic, and he'll go to the foul line. I like the patience that the Eagles are playing with right now, too. They're not forcing shots and throwing things up they don't need to. They're taking their time and getting a lot of really good looks, and that goes into play. Whenever you set a screen, a lot of times Marshall is switching. So, again, players like Miladinovic are out on the perimeter so Georgia Southern can drive inside. It makes chances for Curry to work his way in. He leads the Sun Belt Conference Curry does in field goal percentage. And Carlos Curry, the redshirt senior from Albany, Georgia, has had a tough challenge in his Sun Belt Conference games this season. I mean, facing the seven-foot Kevin Samuel against South Alabama last Thursday, on Saturday at Coastal Carolina facing Isam Mostafa, and now tonight facing the seven-footer in Goran Miladinovic and Micah Hen Logton. Goes one of two from the free throw line. Here's a quick three, nothing but net from Camden Kerfman, the transfer from VMI. Kerfman, another player for the Thundering Herd that can light it up from downtown. We know about Andrew Taylor, but you can't let Kerfman get open either. Under eight to go in the first half. The Eagles leading by 10. Strickland draws a foul. Takes us to immediate timeout. 27 to 17, Georgia Southern with 7.45 to go in the first half. They have been playing extremely well so far to start. More to come after the break on ESPN Plus. Did you know one of me off the glass? It seems like they're doing that today, Danny. Couldn't agree more, Trichelle. Georgia Southern out rebounding the herd 11 to 10, but. Marshall is leading the offensive rebounding game 5-1, to one, and that's why they lead the country in that category, David. No surprise there. Very aggressive whenever they're on offense, crashing the glass. See how can they stop the Eagles defensively. Down by 10, Andre Saversoff on the drive, high off the glass. Hope loose, and Archie has the offensive rebound. Won the shoot, Finch throws it up. And I don't believe neither Archie or Finch knew that the shot clock was winding down. Well, because it looked like it was an offensive rebound there by Carlos Curry, but... Well, it was into the hands of Marshall first, and then it was let loose and recovered by Archie. So technically, the shot clock should have reset at that time. 
Top of the key, three, missed. Rebound Curry, Kerfman on the shot. See Brian Berg directing traffic top right corner of your screen. Finch, just three points in the first half, dancing his way inside the paint, finds a cutting Saversoff, and Andre Saversoff with 10 first half points. Again, Danny, another mismatch, a big on the perimeter. Finch goes to work, Saversoff there for the dump off. Georgia Southern is making a clinic right now of how you use advantages. Mila Dinovic couldn't knock it down in the post. So Carlos Curry winning that battle again as Finch. Oh, what a move by Jalen Finch in the hoop. And Georgia Southern is just using the court so well. It's a foul. An offensive foul as Finch taking the charge. How about the play of the Eagles in the half? Well, they've just been so solid all around. And on that last possession, Finch had a drive in that layup, but Saversov had Kerfman guarding him. So again, there's matchups all across the floor right now for Georgia Southern, whether it's a big with a little guarding them or a big guarding one of the guards for Georgia Southern. Fourteen point Eagles lead and the Hurd's leading scorer Tavion Kinsey has not gotten to go in. Just three points in the first. While the Eagles shooting 65%, more air balls at three. Possession, Marshall. And it doesn't help when Georgia Southern is scoring all around. They're spreading the wealth out. It's not just one player. It's multiple Eagles getting in on the effort. Led by Andre Saversoff with 10. Taylor. A handoff and a quick three. It's an air ball by Jacob Connor. Saversoff to lob the Brown. Kamari Brown making it look like the Showtime Lakers right now. The adjustment in midair to catch that pass right by the rim. I mean, stop it, Danny. Hey, Kamari stop Brown's it. a phenomenal player. Has so much elevation on his shots. Andrew Taylor answering back off the glass and in. I mean, my goodness. Approaching the five-minute mark in the half. Finch, nowhere to go. Gets it back from McFadden. Saversoff recovers. Nowhere to go. Throws it up. Offensive rebound, McFadden. Puts it back in. How about the second chance points from the Eagles? Georgia Southern giving Marshall a taste of their own medicine. They're crashing the glass on the offensive end. They're being aggressive. Taylor dancing around. Hanner starting to wake up. Early. Guarded by Moore. 10 to shoot for the herd. Early. Euros his way through. Tough finish. Very tough. Marshall's got to find something to get going with four minutes left in this half. Taylor's got to find some shots on the perimeter. Somebody has to get going if you're Marshall. Moore. To McFadden. Hand off to Finch. Eight to shoot. Three to shoot. Saversoff steps inside the line. Andre Saversoff. Five of seven in the first half with 12. 12 early points for Saversoff just in the first half. He has put on a clinic. It is a 16 point Georgia Southern lead. Early can't hit the corner three. This Marshall team is stunned. I mean, look at the comparison of field goal shooting. 64% for the Eagles, just 35% for the herd. Finch to drive the lob. Brown to jam! And Dan Tony's going to call a timeout. Kamari Brown making it feel like showtime in Hanner. That's one way to bring in the new year. He's got springs in his shoes, Danny. My goodness. Kamari Brown, rise up, climb the ladder, and send us the break.
everybody is hyped in this game. Kamari Brown really did show out and will continue to show out the rest of the game. That's something that Marshall head coach Dan D'Antoni loved about playing in the Sun Belt Conference, transitioning over from Conference USA. He said the crowds are a lot louder and larger compared to Conference USA play as Micah Hinn logged in on the follow, puts it back in. A couple of those new additions. This is a fairly new matchup for Georgia Southern and Marshall. You know, you mentioned them transferring conferences. It's just completely different. New environment, new players. And a good finish by Jalen Finch dancing his way inside. The Eagles have made their last four shots. And that time Finch had Killen guarding on the perimeter. Arnold Chili Killen gets it back. Here's Tavion Kenzie. Kenzie guarded by Saversoff. Oh, tough shot inside. Gets that one to fall. Man, that was great defense by Saversoff. Made it really difficult for Kenzie, but he just rose up and hit it. It's great defense, that's her, but better offense by the herd. Under two to play in the first half. Georgia Southern has commanded this game from the start. Saversoff, oh man, through two defenders. Andre Saversoff with 14 in the first half. Danny, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but again, it's another mismatch for the Eagles. <laughs> Tavion Kinsey, basket counts and the foul. Now you're starting to see Kinsey wake up a bit. Well, he realized that he has to. His team is struggling. Kinsey's got to be, be the one to start the engine, get it going, and try to see if he can get this Marshall team back on the feet. This is going to be a unique challenge for Tavion Kinsey. Had some struggles in the beginning of the half. Now starting to find his groove. Completes the three-point play, and he has eight in the first. Back to that half-court trap, Danny. Seeing if they can slow down Georgia Southern. Well, he's also a foul. It's Andrew Taylor got his hand in. How does Marshall try to stop the Eagles here in transition? Well, right now, again, it's been all about the fact Georgia Southern is getting the matchups they like. For Marshall, if I were them, I would go with the smaller lineup because Finch is just really carving out any lane he sees on the floor. They have to find a way to get better matchups. Finch the long Kamari Brown once again, and that time just a rim rocker. It's showtime, big time, real time, your time, whatever time. Kamari Brown is going insane right now. Good gracious, and he got the steal as well. In transition, Saversoff on the wall of the jam. I mean, my goodness, this is something I have not seen before from Georgia Southern and Kenzie with an emphatic answer on the other side. <laughs> Danny, we can't even keep up right now. The back and forth, the we energy, can. holy. You would, think, you would think this is a closer game the way both of these players, Kinsey and Brown, have been showing out. Absolutely. Kinsey now with 10. Brown with 8. But 6 of those points have come from alley-oops. I mean, this is a different Georgia Southern team we're looking at offensively, David. Well, and that is in part because Georgia Southern is typically known under Coach Brian Berg as a defensive team. Very slow pace on the offensive end, but that is what's so beautiful about this. The adjustments that this Eagles team has made, they're playing very free flow, Danny. They're up and down the court. They're not slowing it down. Whenever they see a chance for transition buckets, they take them. 70% shooting from the field, 3 of 5 from long distance, and Jalen Finch's free throw puts the Eagles at 3 of 4 from the charity stripe. All this combined with great defense is why Georgia Southern is leading by 18. And that's a testament to head coach Brian Berg and what he's done throughout the years. It feels like this is the point where Georgia Southern is turning things around. You have seniors that have been buying into their roles, and it shows on the floor throughout Sunbelt Conference play. Absolutely. Shot and game clock separated by five seconds. Tavion Kinsey now with 10 points. Open lane, basket counts, and the foul. Almost a poster dunk there by Kinsey, but 
his ability to rise up with contact and still finish. He has come alive here late in the first half, Danny. That's why he's on the Lou Hinton Award watch list. One of the best mid-major players in the country. Coach Berg going to call a timeout for the Eagles. It's a great opportunity for Marshall to talk things over before they go into the locker room. I mean, you're seeing Tavion Kinsey wake up, but who else needs to step up for the herd? I think it's Andrew Taylor. Taylor averages one point less than Kinsey on the season with 19. Their best shooter from beyond. Great perimeter shooter. Finch, a great leader, great ball handler. I mean, these guys have bought into what Coach Berg wants to do. And you can't forget about Andre Saversoff, nicknamed Mr. Consistency, with 16 points off a of 7 of 9 shooting. Kinsey completes the three-point play. Heard down by 15. Shot clock turned off. Eight seconds to go and a half. Moore, double team. Stolen by Taylor. Kinsey fires from the logo. Oh, Tavion Kinsey! From the eagle and puts the herd with Finn 12 in the half. And that is a way to end the half for Marshall and Tavion Kinsey. Give them some momentum going into the second half. What a shot from way downtown. Against Queens University, Queens College rather. And I want their other loss was against UNC Greensboro after a three game road trip. The final game of a four game road trip for the herd. See Coach Berg looking off for Georgia Southern. I mean, what was the message from Coach Berg in the locker room? Continue to play with aggression because this Marshall team is going to come out swinging. They're very fast, and this pace is going to pick up. So Georgia Southern limit the turnovers and keep playing aggressive on the offensive end. Tavion Kinsey with the right hand. His first shot of the half won't go on a chilly killing on the putback. That's the other thing. Offensive rebounding, they're going to crash the glass more and more as this half goes on. Finch with a screen by Curry. Saversoff inside the Curry. Backing down the freshman, but a traveling violation. Good pass inside. I mean, they found the matchup they liked with Carlos Curry deep by the rim. It's the turnover. Kenzie underneath, too strong. Rebound Curry. So overall, been a team rebounding effort from the Eagles. Out rebounding the herd by three. Saversoff corner pocket, too strong. And a foul on the floor as Kerfman got wrapped up with Curry. But that shot right there came because Finch was breaking down the defense and able to kick it out to the corner. Joshelle Kamani has more on this game. After getting a word with Dan and Dan D'Antoni, he said that his team needs to get back out there and do what they usually do. This doesn't happen often with their shooting percentage going out now, and they need to play ball like how they usually do. Back to you, Danny. Thank you, Trishel. And, you know, for a laid-back coach like Dan D'Antoni, that's a laid-back answer. I mean, he knows that the first half, well, the middle are unorthodox for this Marshall team and knows they're going to get back in rhythm. He also said that he's been coaching for 50-plus years, Danny, so... <laughs> You know, things like this, don't stress him out too much. He knows that his guy's going to come out in the second half and give it their all. And really, that's all you can ask for as a coach. Very player-friendly, as I mentioned. And, you know, there's going to be adjustments made. And this Marshall team, don't count them out. They're going to be playing fast. I mean, you know, as excited as we were watching this first half for Coach D'Antoni as Strickland misses the second free throw. You know, when you have 30 years on a high school level, as Kelna Chili killing jams it in. Well, there you go, Marshall within eight. Just like that, single-digit lead for Georgia Southern now. Caden Archie on a chilly killing, tipped it. The Eagles will keep possession. The Eagles have to continue to be aggressive on the offensive end of the basketball because Marshall is going to make plays as Caden Archie. Good defense inside there by killing. Archie was looking for the corner pass. Almost a steal, poked by Taylor. Strickland tend to shoot. Draws another foul. Hey. 
on a chilly Kellen will pick up his second foul. Strickland back to the line. Free throws, very important as well, always in the second half. Strickland entering tonight's game a 74% free throw shooter. Knocks down the second. Taylor, nice find inside the Anna Chili Killing. Kicks out the Kinsey all alone for three off the right side. Open shot there for Kinsey, exactly what he wants, just have to finish. And Archie with the finish underneath from the baseline. There it is, Georgia Southern playing fast, not settling in even though they have the lead. They're still playing that up-tempo basketball. Taylor open, catch and shoot three, and that's his bread and butter. That is a player right there you cannot leave open. He will make that shot almost every time. Taylor, a 34% three-point shooter on the year, knocks down a second of the night. Jalen Finch up top, guarded by Camden Kerfman. Got a screen from Strickland. Oh, great hesitation. Out to Saversaw for three. Offensive rebound, Curry. Can't put it back in, but draws a foul. The second time now that Finch has drove and penetrated inside, forcing two defenders for help defense, kicking it right back out. Missed shot from Saversov, but Carlos Curry was there for the offensive rebound putting it back up off the glass and missing, but now you're back at the free throw line. We're already, it's almost three minutes in, and we've seen four fouls from the herd. How do you limit that going forward in the half? Well, Georgia Southern is playing aggressive, so you have to just play sound defense, keep your hands to yourself. Carlos Curry misses another one. Curry comes up empty from the line. Now an eight-point game inside Hanner. Marshall starting to find their groove. Inside, nice find to hand Logton. One word, Danny, and that is vision. Tavion Kinsey looking back to center court, but passing it right back down to the block. Just a beautiful pass. Curry can't get one over hand Logton. Eagles will keep possession. And defense from Marshall looking a lot better here to start the second half. Inbound to Saversaw, finds Curry. Backing down Kinsey from the free throw line, takes a high bounce. Rebound Taylor. Kerfman nowhere to go. Screen by Anachili Killen. Kenzie with space. Oh, denied by Archie. Get that out of here. What a block by Archie. And Strickland absorbing contact. Basket counts and the foul. Ty Strickland looks to complete a three-point play as the Eagles lead by eight. Four minutes have gone by in the second half. Georgia Southern, a slow start, but Ty Strickland pushing up the pace. Hey team, the new school year is about to start, and today we're going to talk about best practices. Did somebody say practice? No, coach. I said 45 lead. Ty Strickland looking to complete a three point play. Got to the wall right there, man. Where are you running to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, <laughs> oh, Gus. Overall, David, what have you liked on both sides here in a second? Well, Georgia Southern has been patient, but Marshall on the defensive end has been much better because they're playing aggressive. They're making the Eagles very uncomfortable, and you're not seeing those mismatches like we saw in the first half. Ty Strickland now in double figures with 11. Camden Kerfman alone for three, and that's one way to answer back. Marshall hitting their fifth three of the game. Kerfman coming off that downstream just flashes right back up to the perimeter. Great basketball for Marshall.
Finished directing traffic. Inside finds Savrasov. Back out to Strickland. Stolen away by Taylor. Marshall only down by six. Jacob Connor can't get that one to go. Strickland with the miss. Going to go all the way. Finds Finch in the corner. Archie, baseline, fades away. No, too strong. Possession will go to... It's going to stay with the Herd. We're going to stay with the Eagles. Georgia Southern has been crashing the offensive glass. That's been a big part of why the Eagles have a lead in this game. They're not letting Marshall get to all the rebounds. Off the foot. Still possession, Georgia Southern. Marshall starting to creep back in, only down by two possessions. Absolutely. Tavion Kinsey directing traffic, but a lot of players have been getting involved, like Kerfman. Archie gets one over the seven footer. Little finger roll action there for Archie, right over the seven footer. Catch and shoot three short by Kerfman. Gets it right back after the offensive rebound by Han Lockton. Pass is tipped and recovered by the Eagles. Archie. Inside McFadden. Nice passing. Savrasaw with the left. No. Taylor inside the Kinsey. Kinsey spins. Draw the foul. That's a veteran with a veteran move right there, just being patient, going up to draw the foul. But McFadden has played some really good defense. He had the seven-footer on a possession to go and was able to contest. So you see Kenzie with just a spin, and McFadden definitely got him on the left hand. Tavion Kinsey, a 73% free throw shooter. I mean, he has put up a decorated career with the Thundering Herd in his five seasons with the program. He's second all time in career games and career field goals, fourth in career points. He'll likely creep in the top three by the end of the season, only 90 points back. That won't help miss with the second free throw. Also scored his 2,000th career point against Miami. Fourteen to play in the game. Ten to shoot. Tyron Moore, nice find to Kamari Brown. Moore inside, three to shoot. Pulls it up from the elbow. Tyron Moore, his first basket. Moore got him with a shot fake, was able to just slow down and get the floater inside. Andrew Taylor making it look easy from the wing for three. Back to a six-point game. I've said it before. Do not let him heat up. He is dangerous from outside. And between Taylor and Kinsey, if they both get going, Marshall has a good chance in this game. We're going to reset. Sabersov from the free throw line. Bodies his way in and gets one over him. Locked in. That is a seven-footer, Danny. That was almost another three by the herd. Kamari Brown the rebound. Moore inside. Nice pass to Savrasov was tipped by Kinsey. Eagles will keep possession. Kinsey saw that one. The flash from the baseline. But how about Savrasov going over the seven footer? I mean, that is not easy. His first basket in the second half, Savrasovs. We get the inbound from Archie. Oh, nice find. Brown. Oh, that's three consecutive baskets from the Eagles over the seven footer hand locked in. And that was great touch by Brown. He just put it right over the outstretched arm. Taylor at the corner, guarded by Savrasov. Long pass to Kerfman. Deep three by Jacob Connor, rebounded by Archie. 
Great defense, not letting Taylor, because Taylor wanted to take that shot in the corner, but Georgia Southern playing up, not giving him the three. Zabrasov inside, McFadden, and that time blocked. And Logton showing why he leads a Sunbelt in blocks per game. Connor the drive off the glass. Connor has struggled here today, but a good sign for Marshall. He's very dangerous from the wing, and you see the length that he plays with. He can go over anybody. 6'8 combo guard, freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Moore. Didn't call that a double dribble. The lob from Archie to McFadden was off. Connor recovers. Kenzie. Oh, nice find inside the Camden Kerfman. Kerfman got that one off right before Brown was able to come over and help. Marshall was moving the basketball very well. Saversoff going to call a timeout. Under 11 to play. The herd of Major back in. Made their way back in within six. The Eagles leading 52, 62 to 56 on ESPN Plus. Under 11 to play in regular. Maybe on Kinsey. Well, you know, we've talked about mainly Kinsey scoring throughout this game. But one thing you touched on, Dave, at the start of the broadcast, Kinsey's the only player in the nation averaging over 20 points, five rebounds, and five assists. So Kinsey had been finding his teammates. He has four assists on the night. Big part of his game right there. Top of the key, Finch finds Caden Archie. McFadden at the elbow. Kamari Brown pull up jumper. No, rebound Taylor. Taylor on the drive, high off the glass, rebound McFadden. Not where Taylor wanted at that time, David. And Georgia Southern just playing really good defense, forcing Taylor to spots that he doesn't usually play from. Oh, nice floater by Jalen Finch. He has 10. Finch has grown so much as an aggressor on the offensive end. I talked about it from the open. Seeing him do that right there, you didn't see much of in the first half of the season. Well, here's one thing you're seeing for Georgia Southern, running a 2-3 zone. Coach Berg talked about using that type of formation, but it doesn't matter as Goran Miladinovic finds the cup. And Miladinovic knew exactly where to sit in that zone. Georgia Southern typically plays man-to-man, -man, but for Marshall, they're going to carve that zone up. Oh, nice alley-oop from Brown to Curry. Miladinovic finds Kerfman. Kinsey back to David Early. Midway through this second half. Ten to shoot for the herd. Miladinovic out to Taylor. Catch and shoot. Can't get that one to fall. Good rebound by Brown as Miladinovic was right there as the ball came off the rim. But Andrew Taylor, that wing right there, he's trying to get his shots off, but the Eagles are playing so high up, not letting him get comfortable. Jalen Finch over Kinsey. No. Rebounded by Kerfman. Kerfman to Kinsey. Kinsey with the layup. Kinsey with a beautiful slip off that screen straight to the cup. Back to six-point lead for the Eagles. That's the closest that Marshall has gotten in this game. Can they cut deeper into this deficit? This has been the point, Danny, where Georgia Southern keeps on extending the lead. It's been right at six. Archie, nowhere to go. Good defense from Mila Danovich. The Eagles will lose possession. It'll go to the herd. And that takes us to another media timeout. Six-point lead for the Eagles. Can they hang on with 8.14 to go? Find out after the break on ESPN+. Plus. Are we still on for three? I'm on the phone. When your team needs more space to work. Game, and as of right now, he has 19. Their head coach, Dan D'Antoni, said, if you get up at 6.30 in the morning every morning like I do, you pass him going to the arena. And that just shows his work ethic, why he's kept the herd close in this game. Saversov missing a three offensive rebound, Finch. 
Ty Strickland inside after the fake and knocks down the mid-range jumper. Great basketball. You don't see that a lot nowadays. Usually they take the three-pointer, but Ty Strickland taking a dribble, pulling up for the mid-range. Strickland with 13. That's the fourth eagle in double figures tonight. Taylor, corner three, no. Rebounded by Brown. Finds Saversoff on the outlet. Perimeter passing from the Eagles. Now Marshall running a 2-3 zone and stolen away by Kinsey. Kinsey draw the foul. We talk about his offensive game, but there's a glance of his defensive ability with that range and long arms able to wreak havoc. Another media timeout on the floor. The Eagles leading by eight with 7.26 to go on ESPN+. Plus. I'm a screen addicted tween. For Marshall, only down by eight. What can he do in this next couple of possessions? Continue to feed it to Kinsey. Right on cue, Tavion Kinsey inside. He has 21. And sometimes it's simple, Danny. When you have a player like Tavion Kinsey, you just give him the basketball. Approaching seven minutes to play. Strick on the Finch. Inside the Curry. Backing down hand. Locked in. Carlos Curry with five points. Hand locked in seven footer. But Carlos Curry is no small dude. He has long arms and he's he can do that stuff in the painted area. Taylor fires away, hits the three, and the foul. And that's what Taylor gets paid to do practically, Danny, is hit three-pointers. Don't say that. Don't get paid. That's why he's recruited on. Metaphorically <laughs> speaking, obviously. Obviously, he doesn't actually get paid. But, no, that's exactly what Marshall really needs to do. Tavion Kinsey being aggressive. But whenever the both of them are aggressive together and you mix in Taylor from beyond the arc, that's when the Thundering Herd are at their best. Completes the four-point play. I mean, we talked about Kinsey throughout this game, but Andrew Taylor is third in the Sun Belt Conference, averaging 19 a game. Again, you cannot leave him open. A foul there by Strickland gave him four points on that. Curry with the right hand again, this time off the left iron. Early double screen, Lob Kinsey can't hang on, and there's a foul. Kamari Brown going to pick up his second. Not a bad foul there by Brown. Kinsey had an easy alley-oop, and Marshall is finally, it feels like, comfortable on the offensive end, and not just through Kinsey. Other guys are getting involved like Taylor, and that was a good pass as well to Kinsey inside. It is now a one-possession game. What has worked out for Marshall throughout these last couple possessions? Started with Kinsey, but now other guys are hitting their shots. Andrew Taylor, a couple of three-pointers in this second half, and that's been the big thing. Better defense and more offense from guys outside of Tavion Kinsey. I mean, look at this. Marshall was down by as many as 18 points towards the end of the first half. Now within three with six to play. Jalen Finch on the drive, hesitates. That's a tough finish from a senior Finch. Surprise, no foul was called along with that shot. Taylor the lob, hand locked in, fouled. And once again, Kamari Brown getting tangled up in the post for the Eagles. That's his third foul. And you got to be careful now. Five minutes still left in this half, three fouls. They need Kamari Brown. Well, here's one thing to point out. David. I mean, that's the fifth foul for Georgia Southern in his half. Marshall has five fouls in the second half, but they had four within the first three minutes of the second. How have they played clean throughout this half, David? Well, they've just been 
aggressive, but in a better way. In that first half, because of those mismatches, they had bigs on guards, and you just saw a lot of lazy fouls. But now Marshall is getting to their spots on defense and forcing Georgia Southern to be uncomfortable. And locked in, missing Bo from the stripe. Free throws, Danny, a big thing here with five minutes left. Well, Marshall last in the Sun Belt Conference in free throw percentage. They're shooting 46% tonight. Georgia Southern no better at 42%. Savrasov kicks to Finch, 10 to shoot. Finch to drive, the right hand off the glass. Finch has hit some really tough layups here in this second half. I mean, what a finish. Inside, Anochili killing, kicks to the corner. Kerfman, corner three. Offensive rebound, Hurd. Taylor, quick fire. I mean, Taylor, just so much poise on his shots. And it's the quick release as well. I mean, he caught the basketball. It didn't even look like he would shoot it. And then as soon as you blink your eyes, it's up. I mean, I was watching his eyes. I mean, there was no... No freak out moment, just a silky smooth stroke from Taylor with his fifth three. What a shot. Taylor has come alive along with Tavion Kinsey, and that's why Marshall's down by four. Finch inside, and an offensive foul, or rather it's going to be a, yes, it is an offensive foul, or correction, I'm sorry. It's going to be on the herd. Push off by Taylor. It was a push off. It's exactly right. Finch was patient inside the lane. We'll get another look at it. Yeah, first was looking at that hand by Finch pushing in on Taylor, thinking yeah. it was offensive foul, but correction that is on Taylor. And that's his third. And that's a big deal. Brown with three, Taylor with three as well. Approaching four minutes to go. The Eagles have made four of their last five. Trying to hang on to this lead and remain unbeaten in Sunbelt play. Tipped, five to shoot. Archie blocked. Curry with the jam. Don't give up on the play. It was a great defensive block, but Carlos Curry right behind him, never gave up, able to finish it with a dunk. Auto Chili Killen finds Taylor. Guarded. Taylor almost hit the three. The Eagles recover. That's scary, Danny. Taylor has that look in his eyes. Curry hangs on. The right hand. Hand locked and got a piece of it. Eagles still keep possession. Fresh 20 on the shot clock. How about the hustle? I mean, Marshall's playing great defense, but it's the hustle plays. It's Carlos Curry getting a rebound. It's Kamari Brown with an offensive rebound. And it's Jalen Finch. Oh! Weaving his way inside to put the Eagles up by eight. I mean, how many highlights are we going to have in this game? Kamari Brown, now Jalen Finch. Three minutes left. Kenzie finds a wide open hand locked in for the two-handed flush. And a quick timeout from the herd will take us to our final media timeout of the night. 78-72, Georgia Southern trying to remain unbeaten to start the Sun Belt Conference season. More to come after the break on ESPN+. Plus. Then you get to face Old Dominion, James Madison as well. So, you know, there's a lot of new faces that the Eagles are already seeing in Sun Belt play. And you're already seeing what these new Sun Belt teams can do. Marshall overall 12-3 and three on the year, but down by six with under three to play in regulation. Almost a steal by the herd. The Eagles recover. Good defense there. Eagles lucky to get that ball back. The Eagles have still continued to shoot the ball well, 60% from the field. Finch double team, eight to shoot. Sabrasov finds Strickland all on the corner. The drive, basket counts, no, offensive foul. Obina on a chilly killing, taking the charge for the herd. Killing got his feet set and was prepared to take that charge with Ty Strickland. Driving inside the lane. Those are the plays that make a difference with two and a half left. Andrew Taylor across half court. He has 18 points, five threes.
McKenzie leads the way with 22 for the herd. Hand locked in, gets that one over to Archie. Back to a four-point game now. Great feed by Taylor off the slip. Marshall really getting things going. Final two minutes of regulation. Finch, 10 to shoot. Inside, Jalen Finch short, hand locked in. Couldn't hang on, they're staying in possession. Marshall, the Eagle fans can't believe it. And that one was close. Under two minutes to go, they can review. A big possession for Georgia Southern, only up by four. Both teams with six fouls. The next will put each in the bonus. Also, both teams with two timeouts remaining. Baseline inbound from Archie. Finds McKenzie McFadden. Double team by the herd. And a timeout called by Georgia Southern. Good timeout, but even better defense by Marshall. Never gave Georgia Southern a chance to breathe on that possession. Outside for Taylor because he's the one that's been running the offense the last couple minutes hitting a lot of shots But again, I'm feeding it to Tavion Kinsey if there's nothing there Well, the Eagles have possession will be a sideline inbound following their timeout Archie finds McFadden again Tend to shoot Finch Left side five seconds on the shot clock Find Saversoff, two to shoot. Saversoff driving, got it up in time, but blocked. Shot clock violation. Great recovery by Killen. It looked like Saversoff had the layup off the glass, but Killen recovers and gets the block. How about that defensive possession by the herd? And just look at that. Saversoff is a big guy with long arms. Killen able to extend. Under 90 seconds left, the herd down by four, 78 to 74. Kerfman up top, guarded by Archie. Taylor driving inside, the right hand, no, rolls out, offensive rebound, then put back, head locked in, and it's a one possession game. Georgia Southern switched everything on that possession. That's why there was an easy rape, rebound inside from Ann Lockton. Final minute. Finch with space. Seven to shoot. Finch to drive. The right hand. In and out. Rebound heard. Outlet pass to Kinsey. The herd not calling a timeout. Heard the drive, offensive foul. I said it after the charge that Marshall forced. Those are the plays that matter. And Danny, that might have been the biggest play of this game. Jalen Finch guarding the best player on the floor, Tavion Kinsey, drawing that charge. Quick substitution made by the Eagles. Tyron Moore checks in. Shot and game clock separated by one second. If you're Marshall, do you foul? You have to. Absolutely foul on this possession. For Georgia Southern, that's exactly why they bring Moore into this game. A good free throw shooter. Moore an 86% free throw shooter. So this foul will send the Eagles to the line for one and ones. Just over a second off the ticker. Shot clock turned off, and Jalen Finch will go to the foul line. Boy, are these some big free throws, Danny. A one and one. So you miss this free throw. Marshall still down by two, can even take the lead. I mean, these are the biggest free throws of the game right here. And remember, Marshall with two timeouts left as well. Absolutely. Coach D'Antoni more than likely going to call it. Another substitution change, so Moore was supposed to be the guy to get fouled and knock down the free throw, so Ty Strickland coming back in, being a lockdown defender that he is. Offense for defense, substitution. Smart job by Coach Brian Berg. Yeah. 
First free throw connects. Hasn't been the best free throw night for Georgia Southern. Now 6 of 13, but they're able to knock him in late. That's when they matter the most. And this one is big. Can make this a two-possession game. Misses. One-possession game. No timeout called by the herd. They're going to let it go. And it's stolen away by Saversoff and a foul. Andre Saversov, Jalen Finch made a great defensive play, drawing the charge. A wide open hand locked, and, and Saversov flashed immediately down. He saw it, got the steal. What great recognition from a player like Saversov. He knows this program. He's played a lot of basketball. That was a big one right there. Was that the right call by Coach D'Antoni not to call a timeout? I think it was. You don't want to get your defense set for Georgia Southern. We know about Taylor. And he missed the one and one. The Herds still have a chance, and they still won't call a timeout. Ten seconds. Taylor, high off the glass. No. Rebounded again by Archie, and another foul. Once again, the Herd don't call a timeout, and defense for the Eagles locks it down. This is what Coach Berg has preached to his team. Defense, defense, defense. Georgia Southern is making that come to fruition right now. So I got to ask you again, David, because you said that it was the right call for Coach D'Antoni not to call a timeout the first time. Should they have called a timeout that time? Maybe. After that first time and it didn't work, I think it would have been smart to try and get that second timeout and use it to let your offense get settled and, you know, give them a play to run. Archie knocks down the first free throws. The Eagles are in the double bonus. The two-possession game. And Archie hits both. 4.6 to go. Kenzie to Kerfman for three. No, and that'll do it. Georgia Southern, an 81-76 victory over the Thundering Herd and remain undefeated in Sunbelt Conference play at 3-0.